Okay, so hi everybody. Um, welcome to Prague Linux, Linux Days CZ. They didn't tell me how to how to introduce the, their side of it, um, as well as the Gen Gentoo Mini Conference. Um, it's been a couple of years since we last had a Gentoo Mini Conference, and I see most of the audience is full of the developers again. <laughs> um, I, I'm Robin, um, Robert too. Uh, I've been involved in Gen 2 now since 2003, and I have done a lot of things in that time. Um, and some of it has definitely taken me to realizing that people need to do many things in Gen 2. You can't, unless you're really, really short of time, just being on one project doesn't necessarily help the distribution. You need to find, find where you fit in and contribute, um, either because it's something you want to do or it's something that needs to be done, and you might not actually really want to do it. Um, that's what got me stuck into the infrastructure team in the first place. Um, other people weren't really getting anything done. Um, so, by way of a show of hands here, just seeing how many people are not Gen 2 developers or past Gen 2 developers. Okay. <laughs> um, do you know of the, the meta structure of Gen 2 or do you want a, the quick overview? Otherwise, I'll skip those slides. Um, so, Gen 2 as an organization is a strange two-headed beast um, from the original Metastructure projects. Uh, the distribution side, um, where the development actually takes place, has become quite separate from the foundation side that handles the nonprofit needs. Um, so while the distribution side ends up just dealing with the code, um, on the foundation side, we have to look at the legal issues, the financial issues, and whatever else is taking place that doesn't really fit onto the code side. Um, however, at, at the same time, some of the things that have cropped up on the development side, such as Comrel, um, one might argue that they have more of a future on the foundation side, and I'll get back to that later. Uh, so, on the distribution side, uh, for our, our three gentlemen there that aren't, aren't familiar with it, uh, all of the developers end up electing the council, um, and the council is supposed to be the buck stops here for technical issues. Um, additionally, all developers are in zero or more projects, um, and your project is whatever you want to get done collectively, um, be it KDE, audio, games. Um, your project is supposed to elect a lead every year. Uh, I don't think many project teams have actually held elections ever. Um, sometimes it's nobody, nobody else wants to do a leadership role, and occasionally everybody will try to avoid leadership. Um, this cannot necessarily be bad sometimes. Um, on the foundation side, um, by way of bylaws and the laws of the state of New Mexico, um, the foundation is formed of members, which originally were all active Gentoo developers, but by, by statute, um, it's actually open for anybody to apply to, and they just need to show that they have some interest in Gentoo. Um, so I think we have three non-developer members that have ever applied, and we have quite a few past developers that are no longer active in Gentoo, but are still active as members of the foundation. Um, the members, I. Uh, The members end up electing the trustees, and the trustees are the board of trustees. 
they themselves either get things done or they appoint officers to do things. And again, by bylaws, we must have a, a president, a secretary, and a treasurer. And then the bylaws specify that there's a whole other slew of other officers you, you can have that are declared in bylaws. Or there's a little line at the bottom that says, or you could make an officer, add an officer role as whatever's necessary. Um, I was actually one of the first other officer roles um, as the infrastructure, infrastructure officer, um, because I was the main person that brought proposals to please spend money um, to buy Gen 2 servers. Um, so uh, we take care of the assets of Gen 2. Um, in some cases, these are what people traditionally think of as assets the number of servers that we own. Um, but there's also more intangible things, the trademarks of Gen2, the copyrights of Gen2, and the finance of Gen2, um, each of which I'll go into separately. Um, so by way of legal things, um, what we are charged with in the bylaws and um, the the nature of the foundation um, has a rather broad definition of legal. Um, but on many of those discussions, somebody ends up asking, hey, what would a lawyer say? Um, none of us presently are lawyers. Um, we have had legal advice of various degrees in the past, um, including uh, we've had two actual lawyers that had roles on the found as a trustee. Um, Ferris McCormack and Renatz, I'm not certain of his last name, RL03 was the original Gen2 developer. Um, he was the other lawyer that we had. Um, so by way, the main things that we end up doing there is, the, is our legal standing as a foundation safe, um, which has actually led into more questions lately, and I'll get into that later. Um, protecting intellectual property, um, our trademark, both the image and the word, and ver handling various legal questions. Um, one of the ones there, for example, beyond my original list, is the foundation's role is to uphold um, Gentoo's social contract. Um, so we should actually be getting more involved in the cases we're saying, should Gentoo be using less than open product, um, and our previous answer on that, for example, for GitHub is, we will not mandate people to use it, but we can't stop you from using it either. Um, so now on to more current state of the foundation. Um, so infrastructure uh, is the, hel the holder of the majority of our fixed assets. Um, we have about after, I'm doing the, some of the accounting separately, so I need to figure out depreciation values and how to correctly report the servers that we have. Um, but they're split between two locations. Um, and a shout out to the, those two sponsors that have really done us a huge favor in giving us just straight hosting while letting us retain ownership of the hardware. Um, first is the Oregon State University's Open Source Lab. and They've been a supporter of Gen2 for 15 plus years now, longer than I've been a developer. Um, and there have been a great many developers that have come from um, their body of student system administrators. And many of those have gone on to start very successful companies. Um, like one of the major spin outs from that is, is the OSL students that created CoreOS. Uh, many years later on. Um, the other sponsor here in Europe, um, Manitou.de, um, a large German hosting company. Uh, and they haven't been particularly caring about being public before. Um, so they're not actually listed on our sponsors page at the moment because they didn't, they didn't care for click-through traffic. Um, they just wanted to do us a big favor. Um, and thank you to them for what they've done for us. Um, Beyond the infrastructure piece, there are a number of other servers by way of release engineering 
um, in many cases, strange and exotic hardware that's been donated to Gen2. And we host all of that in our rack at the Oregon, Oregon State University again. And I, I have no idea of how to report financially the value of weird donated hardware. Because in some cases, they couldn't even tell me what to declare the value as for shipping it, let alone what it was worth um, as something to buy, because it was just something you could not buy. Um, so on our trademark side, um, one of the things that we've actually got really well sorted out, um, years ago, we paid for proper legal dealing of our trademarks, and it has I've got a giant banker's box of paper from the lawyer, lawyer's office when they were finishing off, and they said, here's the box of all the paper, here's a scan of all the documents that are in this box, um, as well as the actual real trademark cert um, certificates from the US Patent Office. Uh, so I presently have those. And the next time we have to deal with any actual paperwork for renewal on that is in 2024. So that's huge in keeping it done. Um, I dealt with the renewals last year and this year that were needed. And the only other remaining thing we have to do there is keep an eye out for misuses of our trademarks. Um, one of the things that we are concerned about is, is the artwork um, that's being used by various pro um, semi-external projects um, actually um, appropriate to our logo usage guidelines. And on that regard, um, just one of the developers in the past has been particularly active, and we need to make sure that there's not a risk of a bus hitting him and losing the knowledge that's in his head. Um, so <clears throat> I will be, um, the foundation has already approved the creation of a team to make sure the logos and names are being used appropriately, but we have to find people for it. Um, the copyright side is, as is and has been for many years, a murky mess. Um, developers over the years have always resisted any formal um, or even semi-formal semi assignments of copyright. Um, right down to Greg Crow Hartman in his time as a developer saying that he wouldn't sign anything that was even slightly similar to the developer certificate of origin that Linux kernel has. Um, so more we can, work needs to be done in this regard. It'll probably come back to being much closer to the kernel DCO again. Um, and hopefully that won't be too much of a problem. Um, but how to end up representing in the top of all of our works. Um, the copyright statement, do we wind up with more comment lines as to who's written an e-build than actual e-builds, because some of our e-builds now, I think you can express the entire e-builds in five lines. And is that significantly copyrightable? Um, I'm not certain, I am not a lawyer. Um, finance side, so the Google Summer of Code has been fantastic for our revenue over the years. And You'll see in some of my latest slides here with the graphs just how much of our revenue they have contributed. It is more than 50% of Gen 2's lifetime income. Um, on the other hand, merchandise, while it was really good in the early years, it has significantly declined. And one of the early years, we literally made $12,000 in commissions from t-shirts. Last year, we made under 1000 that is a massive decline. Um, we will have to find some other way to make up in income in the future. Um, and I have some more on that shortly. And I have five minutes left, minus us starting a bit late. Um, anything else on this one? Um, we're in some, sometime in the future, we will have a lot more legal expenses. Uh, and this is due to some possible upcoming changes in what needs to be dealt with with legal filings in the IRS side. And we may have to pay for professional legal representation in that regard. Uh, so I'm also not an accountant. And by way of, of legal disclaimers, the, for the financial statements you see here have not been audited in any way. Um, 
I will greatly thank Christian Fittiskund, our, one of our developers, who has a background in finance, who has given me some very useful help in figuring out what part of it should look like. Um, and beyond that, I've just had to Google and catch up on the parts of my accounting high school course that I mostly step, slept through 20 years ago. Um, depreciation is not included, and our prior treasurers didn't do a particularly good job recording information. Um, there are a lot, there are periods of time where I literally got no financial records from, and I had to figure out what was spent by any means I could, um, which meant for the most part digging through mailing lists and bugs and seeing if anything was ever written down, um, and that not a lot was written down. Um, so our cash, fl our cash flow side, we, our cash flow has been good so far. Um, the green line on the top there is revenue and our expenses over the years. And can, those, can anybody take a wild guess on that graph when the Google Summer of Code started and which year we didn't, we didn't participate? <laughs> yeah, right there, 2009, we get, hey, have this money from, from having, I think, the first year we had 12 or 15 students, at, and we were given $500, $500 a piece for those students, um, which was fantastic. And many of the years since, we haven't necessarily had as many students. I think this year we had four students. I'm not 100% certain of that. Um, I was, I've been less involved in the Summer of Code the last few years um, than I was in some of the early ones. I, I don't think I've actually mentored a student myself for three or four years now. Um, so our overall, our, our overall net worth um, approximately, this doesn't include a whole batch of the assets or the depreciation um, thereof. I decided to exclude both of those. Um, if I did end up including them, there'd be more of a, a straight up line um, rather than some of the flat that you see there. The years that are flat, we mostly had some large purchases um, of hardware for the infrastructure team. Um, so what's going to happen in the future? Um, as I say, we need to find more income. Um, most of our sponsorship thus far has come in the form of hosting. Um, companies saying, hey, we're a hosting company, we have some surplus hardware that's sitting in a rack, um, here you can have access to it, um, give us a blurb on your sponsor page and some ad space, and we'll just take care of the hardware and all the associated hosting costs for you. Um, that's been fantastic, um, but it's not necessarily useful in the future. Infra is mostly maxed out on the ho hardware it needs, and at the same time, the foundation will need other income in the future. Um, so we need to find ways to get more. Um, we have the poli in policy document, we actually have them called ca cash sponsors. Um, we should maybe rename it slightly to direct monetary sponsors because nobody actually pays us in real cash anymore. It's all bits these days. And <clears throat> We need to see about it. The one problem in this, however, is how do we spend money? And I'll come back into that in a moment because it fits into legal problems of the future. Um, so other than cash sponsor sponsorships, if there are organizations that would like to hire a developer and pay him directly to work on Gen 2, um, that avoids a whole lot of the legal paperwork of Gen 2 struggling to pay people. Um, and is a fantastic way if you have some other developer and you want to pay him one day a week to work on Gen 2. That works. Um, some of my prior employers have, had, have done this and said, um, for example, ISO Hunt, whom I was here with the last time we did this conference, um, paid me in the end one day a week to work on Gen 2. Yes, as an organization, we ran entirely on Gen 2. Um, but I had a full day a week to put into Gen 2's development, um, mostly on pieces where it happened to overlap with what we were doing. How's our time? We're still good. Um, paperwork, paperwork. Um, US has a complicated regulatory structure. 
Um, and part of this came out of the fact that many of the US states historically like to think of themselves as separate countries um, before they formed into the collective USA. And as such, they each have a large statute of laws that you have to comply with as a company or nonprofit to register yourself before you can do it at a federal level. Um, you, there is, in fact, no way to register yourself solely at a federal level. You have to do it in a state first and then separately get federal re recognition. Uh, and this is problematic. And at the same time, Americans have that Amerocentric worldview that people outside the US don't exist and cannot be used in paperwork. Myself, I'm Canadian now, and even though Canada is so close to the US, I live a European distance away from an American border. <laughs> and I've got at least somebody in the audience in stitches laughing here. Um, yeah, it's, it's half an hour to the border for me, um, for the US, but that's not necessarily the case for most of the US, and a whole batch of Americans don't think any, anything exists outside their country. And because of that, um, for example, the US banks will not talk to me even, uh, even while I'm the treasurer of the foundation. Um, the IRS, the, Amer the American Tax Bureau, they won't deal with me because I, do I don't have a number, a number that they're willing to deal with issued by them. You don't have a number, we won't talk to you. Wow, way to, way to reduce people. It's nothing. Um, so we have restrictions on our spending purpose. Um, in the tax code, there is um, separate types of nonprofit organizations, and the one that we are supposedly structured under, um, 501c3 C business leagues, have a, have a line that says, the organization cannot inure ben benefit to any member. Um, and then goes into complicated definitions of what counts as a benefit. And they don't, however, end up defining what counts as a member. Um, so it, it, it's maybe possible that the foundation could pay somebody that's not a member. Um, but we may need legal advice on that, whether it's doable, and we have to go into figuring out what counts as a benefit much better than we do in the past. We have definitely been able to ascertain that we cannot pay a wage or salary to a developer. Um, and it has to definitely benefit the organization, so we'll have to figure out something there. Um, so in the state of New Mexico, there was a kerfuffle back in 2007. Um, we put our annual report into the physical mail, and the state of New Mexico says we did, says they never got it, and they canceled, canceled our registration because they supposedly didn't find our piece of paperwork, and then it made slash dots and and dig and a lot of news that was going on, and politics happened. Um, the, the entire um, board of trustees at the time ended up resigning, and we elected an entire new board, uh, and we went into finding, oh, actually, they did get it. They lost it in their own paperwork system, and later on said, yes, we actually got it, we're sorry, um, after we paid our new $10 fee to file again. And they reinstated us, and everything was good. Um, the politics died down slightly. Uh, we just and now we make sure um, the improvement since then is you don't no longer have to file on a piece of paper. You can actually do it online as of about four years ago now. Um, so it's become easier. They have finally joined the 21st century. Oh no, only 12 years late. Um, on the federal level, on the other hand, lack of records from the prior, prior foundation trustees has been a huge problem. Um, if you've been involved in Gentoo for many years and you happen to have something, um, primarily pre-2008, about Gentoo Foundation paperwork, please, please give it to me. Um, I was finally digging, digging and poking people enough that Daniel Robbins says he has a box in his garage that he found last weekend that he's finally going to send to me. This, and this means this must date from prior to 2007 because he was long gone because he went to go and work at Microsoft back then. Um, 
So we'll have to see what comes out of these paperwork. Um, one of the things that I am, we are really uncertain about is, did anybody actually file there's a, a form 1023 to get recognition with the IRS. I can't find proof that it was filed. Um, I hope it was. Um, if it wasn't filed, it means we haven't actually been a 501c3 at all, and possibly not even a nonprofit, and we may have to pay a pile of back taxes um, on $140,000 of lifetime income. Um, and I would suspect the tax rate may approach 50% for not paying your taxes in the past. So a whole chunk of money might just go away. Um, but we'll blame it on lack of, lack of prior paperwork filing in that case. I hope, it, I hope that doesn't happen, because that would be a shame to see the money. 